<laughs> okay, there we yeah, go. We'll definitely now we're operational. <laughs> okay, you can uh, you can see I'm only taking part of the screen, but sufficiently so I can see that those objects in the middle right there. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go to the program. I'm gonna disable all that stuff, and I'm gonna turn it back on one at a time so you can see what has to be done. Okay, so uh, first thing I gotta do is I gotta go to uh, the program. Oh yeah. And uh, move over here. See, moving this thing around is such a nuisance. I hate to do it. Okay, let me let me kill the running program. Okay, all I got now is just the just this part of it here. I guess what I'll do is uh, I can't I actually can't fix it that way. So I got to uh, I got to do it this way. There we go. Now I can do it. Okay, so this is the program. Um, all it was, all I did was, let's look down the bottom here. All I did was I made four walls and a, top, a roof and a, and a floor, just like you know, just like we did in the last assignment. And uh, what I did then was uh, I added a couple of things. I added this sphere right here and this cylinder. I added two things: a sphere and a cylinder. I could have put them at the bottom. I put them up the top. Doesn't make any difference where you put them, as long as they're under graphics, as long as they're in the graphics area here. So basically, I created this thing I call basket, it's a basketball, and it's got a diameter of 50, and it's got 30 through 32, so it's got, that's where the basketball appeared. And then what I did is I created uh, this other thing called basket, which is a cone, uh, if I'm not mistaken, right here. It's a, it's a cylinder, but what I did was I said, uh, make the uh, top radius 20, but the bottom radius, uh, I'm sorry, the bottom radius zero. So therefore, it has a radius and it goes down to a point and it has a height and so it's, 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 a, it's a cone really. It's a cylinder really but it's a cone, uh, cone because it, one of the radii is uh, uh, zero. And then I put sphere noise. It, that was just uh, anything. It's just a texture I had. Okay. And I put that on it. So when you see the program running, what you saw was a basketball. Uh, that was the basketball texture on the big sphere. And the little one was just a cone. Okay. Without the, uh, so what I want to do is uh, First thing I want to do is this thing is all operational with, sh with sh shade and everything. I'm going to shut some of the stuff down right here, and we'll talk about it as I build them back up. What I'm doing is I'm shutting everything off that I put on, and I'm going to build it back up afterwards. Okay, so if I run the program now, it won't give any sh 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 uh, shadows. And I'm going to turn off the right light right here. Is the slash a universal symbol for like turning off or disabling a feature? What? 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 The slash that you're using, is that just a universal way of turning off a feature or is it just corrupting it, your way of corrupting the code so it doesn't Wait a minute, what, you, what were you saying, flash? Slash, like the slash symbol. Oh, the slash. Oh, what those slashes do, uh, I only mentioned that once, it probably wasn't enough. What a slash does is simply it's a comment. It comments out stuff. So if you have a code line, it only does it in, in JavaScript. If you have a, uh, our C language, the other languages. Basically, if you have a code line and you put two slashes in front of it, that line doesn't work anymore. You can read it. You, as a programmer, you can look at it. But when you run the program, it doesn't do You're anything. You're effectively like disabling that they call it. They call it a commenting out stuff, yeah. Okay. You, can, you make comments like that, and you can put it any place you want. Like if you notice up above here, like where ambient light, that right there is just a comment. If I let this thing go on, let me show you what I mean. If I let this go on by killing those two slashes, then this, this thing would work. But over there, I have a comment next to it, which would do nothing. That, that's the comment part over there. Oh. So the two slashes just simply say, everything after this, ignore. That's all it says. So the comments can be helpful like as a program. Exactly. And you're trying to like debug and exactly. something. This is what this line of code yep. is supposed to do. But but you have to use it sparingly because the problem is when you put a lot of comments in, they themselves become a block. I mean, they obscure what's going on. So you have to have the clear code so you can see it. And, and the comments can't wrap around and do all that stuff. So then all of a sudden you get jump. And it probably just bogs down the machine more and more. No, it's just it bogs you down because you can't you can't see what's going on. See these things down here are kind of awkward because notice the script is broken between two different lines. So it's hard to read. It isn't like a simple, like, see this one right here? This one right here, everything's on one line. It's easy to see what's going on. But down here, they're all broken up because the names are so long and so forth, they, it just breaks up everything up. So in other words, 
there's two things you have to worry about. Is you have to worry about what the program does, and you have to worry about your ability to read it clearly. So you try to keep things as clearly as you possibly can. Uh, one of the reasons why people use uh, indentations is because they'll, they'll do some overall structural thing, and then inside that they'll do other stuff. Like, if this is true, then do this, 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 and this, and then they end it. So it's like a, it's like a hierarchical, to visually hierarchical. Problem with that is we have so little space from beginning to end that you don't have enough space to do a lot of that because things start wrapping around and pretty soon they're in the wrong place and everything's all over the place and it's kind of messy. So you've got to have to use your own head. You've got to use your own, you know, how, whatever your eyes can do well. Some people, like coders, for example, there's two different styles of coding. One is you write a line of code, then you make a space, then you make another line of code, so you get spaces between them so they can sort of see what's going on. Others jam everything right together. Uh, I used to be of the former group. Now, as you can see, I jam most things together now. See, they're all one after the other. Because it turns out it's easier for me to read them that way. Otherwise, I, these things over here, the only reason why they're separated is because they're different objects, and I have to go in there and make changes, so I don't want to get mixed up. But in the normal code, like right down here, this section right here, they're just one after the other, that's all. So there's no problem. Um, I'm going to uh, shut this down here. I want to compete for the line. There's a line in and out. So now, uh, what I've done is uh, I, I went back up here and I shut down. I shut off the code that did all the weird things that I wanted to do. But I'm going to make sure I did everything right. Okay, everything's good. So now, if I run this program now, I'm going to save it. If I run this program now, see what it looks like. It means that, what, what, oh, wait a minute, maybe it's running. There it is. Okay, now if you look at this thing, all the objects are lit up. Everything's lit up okay, you can see them. But notice there's no more shade on that, no more shadows. And this object right here, they're both just rotating around, but they don't have any shade or shadows. Because all I've got on now is when you first start a program, you don't do anything with the lights. The ambient light goes on immediately. It says light everything up. So what it does, it's, it's in its world, it says, okay, you've got a bunch of colors on the screen, pixels on the screen. Make them a little bit lighter so people can read them all. And so it just, it just lightens them all up. Everything's lit, lit up a little bit. You can control how much ambient light there is. You can make it darker or lighter, whatever. Uh, by simply changing the intensity of the ambient light. But suppose you don't want the ambient light, suppose you want to turn it off, okay? The way you turn it off, you say, remove it. We're going to remove the thing. I'll do that in the code right now. Uh, I have a line of code here. I'll get it right here. Which I put in, which I've deactivated, but I'm going to activate now. Uh, it says, see this thing says here, remove ambient light. That's the command. It's you say scene because the light's in the scene. Dot remove. Uh, I mean uh, dot remove, and, and then ambient lights, which you're going to remove. So I'm going to get rid of that comment thing right there. So now the ambient light will be turned off. That's what it does. Autom automatically, it's always on, but we're going to turn it off. Okay. So I'll save that and run it and see what it looks like. Ah. And that's what it looks like, because there's no light. There's no light, so you don't see anything. The reason why the movies show up is because they're not lit up by any of the lighting. They just, they're movies, that's all they are. So you're in a dark room now. Everything's there, but it's all black, because there's no light shining on it. Uh, that's a good point, too. Uh, the fact that these movies show up is kind of interesting, because uh, they don't subscribe to the, the, the lighting of the room for obvious reasons. You might want to make a a model of a movie theater, and you might want to shut all the lights off, but you want to leave the movie going, so so you have no other way to do it. So that's that's how that works. Okay, that's that's simple. And notice everything else is black. It's not because it isn't there; it's because there's no light on it. That's all. So the first thing I'm going to do, instead of putting the ambient light back on, I'm just going to put uh, one of the. Now let me tell you what lights I have. Here's a jab. You have an object right here. They have an object in front of you. And you're going to have a, a light, what it, which I call the left light, in front of it shining down on it. It's like, like, like a finger on stage, for example. It's a high left light that shines on the object. 
then you have a, a high right object light that shines on the object, then you have a back light that shines on the object. So you've got three lights shining on the object. Okay? There's one more light, but I'm not, I'll talk about it later. But the, these three lights plus ambient is what you normally have. So that left light. Now, it's only left because I positioned it out there. All lights start in the middle, just like everything else. But in the program, before you guys ever got to it, I moved that light 100 this way, 200 this way, and 100 this way. So I wanted to get it out. I wanted to get it away from it, above it a little bit, and forward so I could shine the light down on it like that. And I did the other one. I, I moved it minus 100, minus, by the way, minus in that direction, minus 200. But this one over here, uh, I moved in a positive direction up in this way. So, so they're basically positioned. I told them to be in those positions. I'm going to show you how to do that too. You can move the lights around. I only call them left, right, and back simply because when you get them originally, they're in that sort of that position. But you can give them any names you want. But that's the that's the names they're they're given. They're born with those names. Okay. So uh, let me uh, turn on one of the lights. I'm going to turn on like let me turn on the right light, which would be up here, shining down like so on the object, okay, the, the, the right light would be. Uh, so, what I do is I go to the program here, and I say, see this thing says scene.add right light. It's called right light. So if I, if I unleash that thing by opening the code right there, so you normally wouldn't be taking out comments, you'd normally be writing this in. You'd write in scene.add right light in here, and that means the right light's gonna go on now. Okay, it's already there, but you just have to make it go on. That's how you turn a light on. You simply say add. That's as simple as that. You didn't have to do it with ambient because that comes with the territory. But uh, you do it with this one. Now let's see what it looks like when I turn this light on. <laughs> so you see what you get now is two things appear immediately. You have the highlight. You can see the shiny little highlight on there. That comes with the directional lights. And the light is over here shining down on the thing. In this case, in your position, is shining down like that. And it also makes the, the shade. It doesn't make a shadow. It just makes a shade. Now you notice something else that's kind of interesting. Uh, what happens is the floor lights up too because this light is shining sort of down towards the middle. It shines sort of down on the floor like that. But it doesn't shine up. And notice the ceiling is too high. It's, st it's still dark. Nothing's up there. And the back wall is still dark because there's nothing up there either. This light is sort of shining, it's sort of shining like down, like a spotlight. It's like a broad spotlight that's shining down like so. And so that's why you only get these two, these two objects in the thing. Now the next question is, now that I have that, uh, supposing what you want to do is you want to make the light duller. It comes in automatically. The range of, of the intensity of light is from 0 to 1. 0, the light doesn't show you any light. And 1, it's maximum. It's maxed out, okay? In this case, all of the lights come on maxed out until you tell it differently. But see, see what, what it kind of looks like now. Let me take this light and reduce its intensity. I'm going to reduce its intensity to half, like 0.5. Okay, see if you can notice any difference. Uh, so I gotta go to the intensity line here, and this is the right light. There it is right there. So I'm gonna make it the right light though, because I didn't uh, do this right. Okay. Let me get the right light. So there's the right light dot intensity equals one. Now that means maxed out. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it to 0.5. So that means it should be about half as bright as it was. And that's how you do it. The light, you name the light, and you say dot intensity equals, and that's how you change that, OK? Like I say, you know, this is just their way of doing it. You, I mean, it's their language, that's all. You just have to follow their rules. Whatever they say, just follow those rules. So let me, uh, let me go to the intensity now and see what happens when the program runs. See, it's a little bit duller. It's, it's half what it was before. Floor's darker, everything's darker. So you can actually uh, 
Uh, I've written programs. You can imagine how they're done. They basically, what they do is each frame they subtract a little bit. So you can say, bring down the house lights, and then as you press that button, uh, it'll, it'll say, go from 1 to 0 0.9 to 0 0.8 to 0 0.7 to 0 0.6. So in other words, all the lights come down like that. So you can actually control things like that just by doing a little programming. But that's, that's one of the things it gives you is the ability to change the intensity of the light. Uh, let me... Uh, let me now <coughs> let me now change the color of the light. Okay, I'll bring that in here. You see that color setting right there. What it says is whatever light it is dot color dot set and hex capital H hex, which means it's in hexadecimal. Now you guys may wonder you can actually write these things in decimal, but the reason why I avoid that is because the thing is when you go online you say give me an HTML color, it's going to show you the hexadecimal number. So why not use what they give you? You just take that, plug it in, and you, and you got it. You got what you want. Because otherwise, you got to worry about RGB. What are each one of them doing, and all that? It becomes a big nuisance. So the ideal thing to do is to keep everything in hexadecimal, which is, you know, red, red, uh, G, 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 and BB. So it's in those. You got these six characters that you have to work with. So let me turn right light here to a different color. Let's say right light right there. Oops, not like that. Well, 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 what are we doing here? Okay. And uh, right there it's said to red, double F. It means it's going to be red, okay? Now I'm going to bring this 0.5 back up to 1 because if, if it's red, it's going to be too dark. Colors make things darker. Reason why is because they're conflicting with other colors in the thing. If you have a blue and you project red onto it, it's not going to be big bright red. It's going to be pretty dull. Okay. So what you have to worry about is the mixture of the color, which is textured, and the object, the light that's being sh shined on the thing. So here's a G right here. Let's try it. And see what it looks like. Basically, I've turned the the, the color red by changing its uh, color. Wait a second. Did I lose something here? Mm -hmm. Why is my thing back in the background here? Hang on. Let me try it again. Somehow it uh, started to run behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. No good. So you get that red. And notice the floor, which is also a texture, by the way. But it doesn't affect the movies, but it does affect anything that's still. Because all the objects we have have texture on them. And if the light ignored that, you'd never be able to shade anything. Nothing would work. You'd never be able to do, change the color or anything. The movies are different. The movies refresh every frame. So therefore, the light doesn't have a chance to calculate against it. So it just keeps running. Notice that both of the objects here, I'm going to move a little bit move up a little bit here. Let me go forward. Go forward. I'm going to go up a little bit. And you can see this object right here. Notice when it's in some positions, there's no color on it. And when it's in other positions, you see the color. That's because the color is coming down on it like so. It's red when it's coming down this way. But when it gets in a certain position, it isn't. Uh, and those, these things are actually it does calculations for any shape that you have, and it works It works based on the fact that the sh each shape has a bunch of normals, a bunch of lines heading off on it. And what it does is the angle between the, the, the light, the source of the light, and the normal, that tells it how bright to make a thing and whether to shadow it or not. So it, it knows the closer the, the closer the light is to the vertical, the more bright it is, the, the, less, to the less vertical than it's duller. And that's why it's, it does all these calculations for each pixel. It calculates for each pixel right out. Well, actually, it doesn't quite do that. What it does is it's made out of triangles. It calculates it for each triangle. Then it averages across the triangle for every pixel. It does a quick calculation. But it's, doing, it's actually virtually making a calculation for every pixel indirectly. And so that's why it has to do a lot of work behind the scenes just to make this happen. So, okay. So at this point, what we have is a couple of things. We have shading. The shading shows right here. We have a highlight, and uh, however, it, looking at the uh, looking at the top of the basketball here, 
there, this, this thing is lit up. The light is right above this, this cone. It's shining down and there's no, there's no shadow. It hasn't made any shadow yet. So what I want to do now is I want to turn on the shadows. There's two parts to a shadow. Uh, one part is the source. You have to say, uh, will this thing cast a shadow or not? And the second thing is you have to have the receiver has to say, will I receive a shadow or not? Both have to be turned on. So in other words, if you turn on, make a shadow and receive a shadow, then you'll get a shadow. If either one of these is off, you won't get the shadow. So in other words, you have to tell everything that casts a shadow. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm not only going to cast the ball, I'm going to say make it, make it, have it make a shadow, but I'm going to have this cone right here also make a shadow. Both of them are going to cast shadows. And then I'm going to have the floor and the ball receive the shadow. See, if the ball didn't receive the shadow, then this thing would cast it and it would never hit the ball. You'd never see it on the ball. You can only see it if I say make the ball receive as well as cast. It has to do both. It has to project the shadow and it also has to receive a shadow. This thing up here, since there's nothing shadowing it, it just has to cast a shadow. It doesn't have to receive. So basically what you have is something that casts a shadow, something that casts and receives, and then the floor just receives. Okay. The more of those things you put in, the more calculations the, the program has to do. So you don't want to make everything cast and receive if you don't plan to do it that way. To keep your program going fast, you just pick the things that you think are going to do what you, what you want them to do. Otherwise, it has to you know, do all that math and it doesn't really know what it's doing. So, okay, so let me, let me turn on all the shadowing stuff here. Right here. Down here, the object that's cone, I gave it the name cone, and it's really a cylinder, so I gave it tube. And I say dot cast shadow, a capital S, and I say that's true. So what that means is that will cast a shadow. Okay, that's what it will do when I turn that on. So I'm saying, okay, cone, cast a shadow, like so. And then the basketball, uh, I want the ball to cast a shadow on the floor, so I turn that on also. So when I say basket, which which is what the ball is called, it's basket. And then I say, uh, also, I want the ball to receive the shadow from the cone. So what I do now is I say, basketball receive shadow equals true. See, that's how you do it. You say equals true. No quotes around it or anything, just as it is. And finally, you want the floor to receive the shadow of both things. It will receive the shadow of anything it's casting. So the floor, which is called the floor, by the way, in our program, uh, I gave it the name of the floor. And there it is. Those instructions right there will cause the, the cone to cast a shadow on the sphere, and the sphere and the cone to cast their shadows on the floor. Okay? Now, you're going to see that, but uh, you have to be a little vigilant to see where it happens. Let me just make it run now, see what happens here. Don't forget, now this is a shadow. This is not a, not a shade, it's a shadow. By the way, all these commands are inside the render loop. Okay, all these things are inside the render loop. They don't have to be, but you have to find some way to get to them otherwise. And programming wise, it's a little hard to do. Better just put them in the render loop, and that doesn't hurt anything. Okay, so now you see what's happening. The ball is now making a shadow right here, and the cone is making a shadow right here. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go up a little bit by using the Alt key. I'm going to go up a little bit. So I can see what's going on here. And then I go forward. Now, if you look down, let me look down here a little bit. If I look down, you can see what's actually going on. This this is the cone casting a shadow on the sphere. Notice it does the calculations. The shadow's perfectly around the sphere. And when it goes over the edge, notice that over here on the ground, the shadow of the of the cone actually projects off the edge over here a little bit. Well, let me back up so you can see that a little bit better. They overlap. Yeah, they they overlap, right? Uh, and and most in most of the case you don't see it, but now you see it there, right here. When whenever a little tip of that shadow right here comes over the edge, it projects onto the floor, because it's projecting. I mean, and it does all this. There's a lot of calculations. You can imagine what how hard it is for them to do this, but they have it at the speed we're doing at, too, they're doing very well. And this is the reason why you would want to be casting shadows on anything except where you really intend to. Because if, you, if, you if it had to do all this you know, shape of calculation and all that kind of stuff and 
trying to figure out if the shadow's there and it's not even there anyway, then it's just a bunch of work for nothing. Uh, in normal programming languages, you don't have to worry too much. There's a shadow bouncing out there, the round part of the thing right out of here. It's like it's having a baby basketball or something. <laughs> it has like a word. What? Oh, it says it develops. It looks like it's developing a right. word or a blister. Like, like 2001. It's coming over the edge. But you can, you can see how it goes. By the way, I have both of these guys, the ball and the... I have them spinning very slowly over the X and Y axis or something. They're just they're just slowly spinning around just to give us they would they would be static otherwise and you don't you wouldn't get to see the variations. So there there you have it. You have uh, if I if I uh, go back to the programming here and I change that color uh, right here. I'm setting it to FF zero zero. Okay. So what I could do is I could just set it to uh, zero zero. What do you think that would do? That would make um, it would just be white, right? It would be the absence of color. You think so? Or black. What do you think? Anybody? I forget which is, but it's the absence of color at all. Oh. I just don't remember if that's the absence, absence of, of color. Or the absence mm -hmm. of color, white, as in white. Anybody, so anybody, else, anybody, else, anybody else want to guess about this? Zero, 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 zero. What do you get? You get black, right? F, 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 F. I see all colors add up to white. RGB, all of them on would say we got white. Okay. If you turn them all off, you get nothing. Voila. So if you had like, um, is F, 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 is that white then? Let's try, let's try that. What do you think? Because you're going to turn on red, you're going to turn on green, you're going to turn on blue. Okay. Let's do it though, just to confirm it. So you know I'm not lying to you. Okay, here we go. This is making more sense to me now after having to fight with it in the homework a couple of weeks ago. Well, just remember, all, all light. Do you know who discovered that, by the way? That white light is colors? Who discovered that? Come on, you guys. The greatest scientist that ever lived. Newton. He, he, got a, he got a piece of glass and he made a, made a spectrum. He said, wow, white goes in, colors come out. Prism. Yes. So, he, so, so that's white. There we have it. We have white light shining. Now it's got a white shadow. So I do have kind of a stupid question in addition to this. So you know how it's like R, R, B, B, G, G, or whatever, like the format of the color codes? Yeah. If you had, you know, like 0F, 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 like Z zero what? Zero, what's the second thing? Like 0F, 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 like what would happen if What's you app? What's it, what is that word? Like one on and one off in the pair. Oh, that's zero, it isn't, it isn't binary. Uh, if you put one in there, it's in hex one. So it'll be, what'll happen is, uh, uh, you'll have a little bit of red, a little bit of green, a little bit of blue. Basically, if you have put all of them on, you get a gray. You'll get a, uh, a dark gray. Okay, so it's a, it's analogous to having like pink, light blue, and light green versus red, blue, and green because there's some white mixed in. No, what, what, well, you got R, red, green, and blue. Right. If they're all right. off, if they're all off, you get zero. You got nothing it's showing. Black. Yeah, you put a black. little bit of red, a little bit of green, a little bit of blue, it lights up a little bit, but it's not black, but it's gray. So it's a subdued version thereof. Yeah, because you're putting one in there. What if you put zero, two, it would be a little bit lighter gray. Zero, three, more gray. Uh, okay. And then when you finally put F, 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 it goes white. The gray becomes total white at some point. Can you have like, you know, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero yeah. as well? Yeah. And you would get the same result? No, no, you'd get, you'd get a different gray. Because one is, it's like 10 is higher than one. That's a stronger number. It's going to give okay. you more of that material, but it's going to give you gray. So let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Just value the, there so you're saying, what if you have one zero, one zero, one zero? Yeah. Let's do the difference. Yes. One zero, one zero, one zero. So red's group 10 in, in hex. Okay. That should give you a gray that's like uh, not black, not close to black, but, well. It's not the 
okay. I'm just trying to wrap my head around this. This is a fast machine. This is what you get for $200 10 years ago. See, it's gray. You can hardly see it, but it is gray. That's because the lights are wrong. If you turn the lights off, you'd see it was gray. But if you add like two zero, two or three zero, it gets, it gets lighter and lighter. Let's 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 put it A zero, which is uh, really one two three five six seven A up, A B C D. Let's put it F up there. Make it as strong as we can. Can you go all the way to Z? No, you can only go to F. F is the biggest number. Okay, so it doesn't go like on twenty six characters. No. No. But if it, if, it, if it goes, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E, F. That's okay. what it goes. That's all you have. That's the hexadecimal numbers. All that's all they have. Right, and that makes sense too because then you get into double-digit numbers anyway. So it's with integers, it's the size you go. I guess that makes sense to me. That is a double-digit number. Well, I mean, like, in terms of... Oh, F, it goes to, yeah, then digits, it, has to, then it has to go up, right? Zero, one, two, if you're in the first five, position, F's as high as you, yeah, right, right. Then you go to... Because every number is made of... Right. There up. We can go to nine. That's as high as we can go in yeah. decimal, right? Now you can see it's gray, but it's kind of like a, you know, hokey gray. It's a brighter gray. And it's also combining that color with the color of the object, which makes it even more complicated. If these objects were all white on the floor, you'd really see gray, is what you'd see. But because they're brown and orange and all that, doesn't quite show the same way. Okay, so that that part all makes sense about the uh, next thing is let's uh, for fun let's move the right light. I'm going to move it someplace. Okay, uh, from its current position. What if I move the right light instead of having it over here? I move it across to the other side over there. What would happen? So basically, I'm going to subtract uh, 200 from it. To move it that way over oh, that way. So we'll see where our position is. So in other words, the X position of the right light, I'm going to make this right light right here. I, I have to change these, I'm sorry, but I, I, I thought I was going to fool around with the left light, but I didn't. So you got the right light, position X. I'm going to change that. I'm going to take it down 200. 200. Let's we'll see what happens now when you do that. I've taken that light and I moved it in the X direction that way. Okay. So now it should. Now, how did the right light have a position if it wasn't set up before? The yeah. What happens is it, all the lights start at zero, right. normally. But what I did was, in order to, uh, in order to uh, give you something to work with when you first start, so you don't have to set all the lights locations, I said, okay, I'll set this one at uh, 100, 200, 100. And this one at 100, 200, 100 over here. And this one over here at uh, 100 in the Z direction, uh, 200 up there. So in other words, what happens is all the lights, all the lights are set in position originally, just so all you have to do is turn them on and you'll get something. Okay. You'll get one shine this way. That's why I gave them the name left, right, and back, which are just names I made up. That's, that's just to give them a name. Uh, now you can see what happens is the highlights pointed towards us because we're on the left side. I set us up so that we appear on the left-hand side of the ball. In other words, the original location, I'll show you how I did that too. Uh, the observer, you can put them wherever you want them in the X, Z direction or, or Y. You can put them anywhere you want. So I, instead of having the observer in the middle of the thing because it blocked the owl in the background there, the owl that's rolling in, uh, clawing and stuff, uh, I wanted to put a little bit to the side so you can sort of see all the three different images and the ball and all the stuff. But anyway, at this point, uh, I, I think I've changed this color to gray. I should bring it back to white again. But you can see the highlights there, and the shadow is now down here to the other direction, and the shade is on the other side too. So in other words, wherever that light goes, the shade will be moved around. Supposing you had two lights on like that. You had the right and the left light, okay? I'm gonna. I'm going to let this uh, light retreat to where it was before. I'm going to turn off what I just did. I'm going to say, don't do that. And what I do is I'm going to turn on the right light and the left light and the, leave the shadows on and see what happens, okay? Just to so show you what happens when you add a light to it. Uh, so what I did was uh, the last thing, a couple things I want to change back again. One of them is I want to change this right here to FF back to uh, white. So the light is white again. And I want to turn this right position off here so it'll appear 
when it starts in now, it'll be in its proper position, which is over on this side for you. And the left will be on that side, and the right will be on this side. So let me turn them both on and see what happens now when I turn them on. Uh, I turned on, I said add right light, but now let's add the left light too, right here. So now the left and the right light are both on. You don't have to do anything with the shadowing because you, you shadow by object. You said, let this project a shadow, let this receive a shadow, and you don't have to do anything else. Just turn the lights on it and, the and they'll take care of the shadows, which I hope works. question I was curious about just while this is loading is you know how it's like the lights on the stage you have like your left right and back lighting can you also have like an up light per se you can move light where you want if you move that light down on the floor it'll shine up okay it shines to the center right okay uh, okay let me look at this right here now notice you get two two different shadows that's because the left is casting one and the right is casting one also and notice it makes a union shadow too which is stronger than the two which is, which is really good calculate. They did a good job with this thing. And this guy over here, the left light is projecting it over here, and the right light is projecting it onto the ball. So therefore, what you're getting is the shadow of the, uh, from one light, you're getting the complete shadow of the cone. And in the other one, the cone is dropping it on the ball, so you're not getting its complete shadow on the floor. You see how that works? It's just like real life, just how, if you had two lights in a room, so you want, that's how it would work, do the same thing. Uh, this thing, this cone right here, by the way, also gives you highlights, right? Like when it gets into the right position, it'll, and this will give you two highlights. There's two highlights on this thing now, okay? And you can't see them, but there's one over here coming from that, that uh, right light, and there's one over here coming from the left light. So it has like a double highlight. There's two highlights there. They're very subtle, though. They aren't very strong. Okay, but so adding more lights does that. Let me add the backlight and show you what the backlight does. We haven't talked about that yet. The backlight is in the same position. I believe I put the backlight uh, uh, minus 100 up 200. That's what I did. So it'll be above the object, but behind it on the other side of it over there. So the backlight here, if I turn it on, looks like. So you have the three lights. So far we have four lights. We have the ambient, which colors everything. We have the left light, right light, and back light, okay? And you can have ambient on all the time if you want. It'll just make everything a little bit brighter. You still get shadows and all that. It's just that you get the shadows from the, from the left and right and back light, and you get the uh, color. There it is. You get three balls now. Again, it does the calculation of how dark each of these things is. Uh, good calculation there. Uh, this time, this guy's projected over here, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, there it is. The, the backlight causes the cone to project over here. That's the cone. And notice it's against a flat surface, so it has to stretch it. I mean, it's very smart. This is like smart stuff. These guys aren't kidding. They, when they wrote this stuff, they knew what they're doing. So uh, I think that you can see that you can kind of emulate uh, the real world pretty good with this stuff. If you set the right kind of coloring and shading and uh, which direction the lights are coming from, you could, for example, I imagine if you were a, a filmmaker, they probably have stuff like this where they can actually look, you know, experiment with the lighting and see what they got. Then they turn the, probably turn the lights on really according to that because they're trying to get a certain effect. Anyway, so there you have that and uh, notice how bright that is right now. Uh, that must have been upside down, if I'm not mistaken. And in this case, the... Yeah, it's upside down. That was the upside down. The backlight was coming right over the top of it and bouncing up at us. And in this case, the ambient lighting is still disabled, per se, yeah. right? Because we can't see the ceiling. That's right. Let me turn the ambient light on, show you what the difference is. And by the way, notice that all three lights project towards the center. Therefore, the ceiling's not lit up. And neither is behind us. If you look behind us, oh, that's... Ah, you know why? That's probably... That's probably that way because the backlight is shining forward and it's hitting the front wall. These two guys here, their angle is uh, so severe because I put them out so far, they're pointing this way. But the, the backlight is right up at the top because it bounces right straight towards the wall. So it's projecting towards the wall quite a bit. 
let's uh let me put the ambient back on again just so you'll see what it looks like oh there it is right there see i turned off the ambient by saying remove it and now i'm just going to kill that because the ambient comes on automatically the other ones you have to say add to get them to live the ambient is just there. You, the only thing you do is you can get rid of it. You can bring it back again, too. In your program, you can have an add and bring it back. You can have it go back and forth. It's like turning it off and on, that's all. So let's put the ambient on and see what it looks like and see what the advantage or disadvantage is. I think this is going to look pretty much like the original uh, that we had online, except it's going to have two more lights showing on its own difference. Probably be pretty bright. Yeah, see, it's, it's almost washed out. It's so bright, it's almost washed out. Like over there, for example, it's getting really uh, washed out on that side. You could, uh, to compensate for this, you could reduce the intensity of all the lights or reduce the ambient and let the other guys still be strong, or whichever, whatever you want to do. But you can see the possibilities here, which are whatever you want. Okay, now there's one more light, and I'm going to talk about that now. And uh, it's not in this program. I have to get a different program, but let me get the program and run it for you. <coughs> be able to do it in this program. Let me try it in this program see what happens. I'm going to leave this program still running. Okay, I need this, uh, where do I put it? I put it in this program. I'm going to add a light. See that thing says point light right there? I'm going to add that point light. Now this is a weird light. This is a light that actually, it's like luminescence. It's like the light bulb. No, it's, it's a source of light. Right. So what it does is it takes all of, like if you put it in just in front of something, it lights the thing up enormously so it's really, really bright, okay? If you put it behind the thing, unfortunately it disappears because it's hidden by the object. But if you put it in front of it, what it does is it lights the thing up like a light bulb. So for example, if you created a little light bulb and you put this thing right next to it, this, this uh, light, it would be so bright that you would see the light bulb would look brighter than anything else on the screen because it makes it, it, it causes it to illuminate, okay? Uh, let me, uh, so therefore I've turned it on, but let me put it in a good position here. Uh, the, bas the basketball is, the basketball is 50, so it's 100, so it's 50, okay. So I'm gonna move it forward, I'm gonna move that light forward in the Z direction. Uh, point light right here. I'm going to say point light. Dot position. Dot Z equals. I'm going to bring it forward to, uh, well that was 50, so I'll bring it forward to 60. I'll just bring it a little bit forward of the, uh, of the object. So what I've done is I've said, okay, I'm going to put a light up there, this, this one of these really, really bright lights. And I'm going to put it, the basketball is here, I'm going to bring it forward just outside the basketball. So now we're going to see that thing in front of, just in front of the basketball. And uh, so I turned it on, point light is on, and it's there, and everything looks good. Okay, see what happens. What they do? One more time. Oh, thank pont. you, thank you, pont, bridge. I made a bridge light in French. <laughs> Bad move. I pictured a drone. Good, good eyes. You should, be, you should be a trapper. <laughs> I pictured a light used for growing illegal. What? For debatably legal substances, depending on which jurisdiction you ask. Okay, here we go. See how bright it is there? 
it's really, really bright. If I get rid of the ambience, let's see, let me get rid of the ambience, see what it does. No, that's not going to work. This thing here, it's a little bit high. I moved, I apparently moved the basketball down a little bit. The, the highlight, that, that thing is, the bright thing is right about here someplace. But uh, it's not doing a good job in this program. Let me get a program that has a black background. I got one called Venus Moon, I believe. Let me see if I've got that one running up on, on the web. Let me get rid of this one for a second here. And I'll go up to the web, see what I got. Kill that for now. Kill that for now. In fact, I think I did put it in the site. So let me go to the website where we have it, the, the class site. One more time. So the, this right here. Uh, okay, we, what's the question? The work that God works with the original website. Yeah. There's a little room that's lit up in the middle of the woods. No, I went to reg reg regular woods. Did you ask me? I was wondering if there was a light that you shine on through the. Uh, if I shine something on, on up there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm at. I, that's where I'm going right now. Yeah. Is that what you're asking? No. Ask it again. I, it's, yeah. it's not weird. Well, no, I, I like to figure out what you're saying. The, occasionally, I like to know what you're saying, but <laughs> really, uh, you have a question. What is it? It was with this website, the Godworks website, with your logo that says Godworks. Yeah. That one room that split up. With yeah. Dark background. I didn't know if you added a light to that. I I did do a black background one. I think it's right here. I don't know where is it. I'm sorry. The scene can be colored using lighting. Going, well, this one right here, I believe, is it. This has a couple of things in it, so I should tell them to you anyway while we're at it. Yeah, this is the one that actually has that. See, that's the one. See how bright it is? I mean, that's that's actually uh, got one of these uh, lights in front of it, so it shines it really, really brightly. And if you go inside the object, I'm going to go inside of it here. This is the planet Venus, by the way, is the mapping. It's a spherical map of Venus. I'm going to write in here. Oh, my God. And you see that at that point, it's got enormously bright. It's really, really bright because the light comes right through Venus and shines around it. I mean, it's going to be right in that spot. And what happens is, as the planet rotates, this is bright, but it will get darker as it goes to my left. And it's darker over here. But as it's right in front of me, that bright spot should be very, very bright because the light is sitting in the same spot. The planet is rotating, but the light's right in the same spot looking at it. So you can see that that bright spot there just keeps staying bright. Uh, there's something about this program I should tell you about, too, because it has something in it of interest. Let me back up here, take a look. See how bright it is? Very, very bright there. Let me go around the planet. You'll see how un unbright it is. See, in different spots, see, it's darker over here. It's darker over there. And it'll never get lighter, either. It'll always stay that dark until I go back over to the front of the thing, because this particular program, I'm actually rolling around the thing. So, so I'm just rolling around, looking at the back side of it see what it looks like. The back sides, you know, rather not the back side, but the left side and the right side are dark because they don't have a direct power of that strong light on it. Uh, let me show you what the code of this looks like, though, uh, because that's got something in it very interesting. See, I'm going to back up a little bit. I think I, hopefully this thing has a moon on it. Do you see a moon? Oh, yeah, there's a moon right oh, yeah. there. I thought it was the sun in the earth at first. Now, that moon uh, is actually using a technique that's very, very similar so the one I used to uh, change the radius and the angle to get the camera to be in the right position. It's very similar to that. What it does is, uh, what you do is you tell, you tell the program, I'm going to show you where to do that, you tell the program what the radius, how far away you want this thing to be orbiting, and uh, you tell it uh, the angle that it's at right now, what angle is it at right now. Okay, no, if you tell it how far away it is and what angle it's at, it'll calculate where it is. So what I have to do is I have to keep changing some, some number. I keep changing these values to make it calculate that. What it changes the, the, uh, the, not the length, that stays the same, but I change the angle that it's facing at. The angle keeps changing. So what I do is in the, uh, 
in the rendering function, I just have this variable, which I've defined outside, by the way. I define a thing called degrees outside. And then what I say is, or uh, DEG, I think I call it. And while I'm inside the, 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 the uh, uh, program uh, function, uh, what I do is I uh, say add one to that and then calculate where am I now. Add one to that, calculate where I'm in now. I'll, I'll go through the, control, the instructions right now. But basically, that's uh, it's something you guys should be able to use. It's kind of handy. It's kind of a fun thing to use. Uh, get to it here. Okay, see up here, I, I, can you see that? Can you read it on here? I defined a thing called DEG right there. Now down here in the rendering function, I say DEG equals 0.5 plus equals 0.5, which means every time that angle of degree, you add 0.5 to it, every time you go into the rendering function. So in other words, what it's doing is it's moving. It's moving around the orbit. That's the first thing. And the thing, it has a fixed radius, so it's always the same radius. So down here, when I go to draw this moon, uh, right here, see where it says my moon dot ball? I say the x position of that moon is 150, which is the radius. I have it fixed at 150. And I say whatever degrees now is. So in other words, it says I'm 150, I'm here, it, it calculates. I'm 150, I'm here, it calculates. 150, I'm here. So what it does is, as that DEG keeps adding 0.05 to it, or 0.5 to it, what it does is it keeps changing the value of degrees. So every time it comes into the function, it says my x position is GOX, that number, and my y position is zero. I leave, I'll leave y at the same thing. Notice it doesn't go up or down, it just goes like that. And my z position is equal to GOY 150 degrees. So in other words, it, it uses GOY, but GOX and GOY calculate how far this way the thing is and how far this way it is. So basically it keeps calculating where am I now you know, all I do is just show it. Just show wherever it is, you just show it. So GOX and GOY are kind of interesting. They, they give you the ability to, if you put in the radius and the angle the thing is at, those two pieces of information will tell you where the object is at every period of time as it goes along. That's all it is. There's to it. There isn't much to it. But uh, the other one here is camera radius and degrees. We do this already, only we do it with uh, the camera. And uh, this thing over here is done with, uh, with an object, a specific object. Same calculations, really. But you don't have to worry about that. All you have to do is, if you want the object to rotate around something, you say, what is its radius, and how fast you want it to rotate, which is how big the GPG is going to be. That's all you have to do. And then you can have it rotate fast or slow, whatever you want. Uh, there is a way of, of moving it into other, like things like this. You can move it into another direction. That can be done, OK? But I think I'm going to hold off on that, because it's, it's a little bit of a deal. Uh, I'll tell you ahead, though, what the principle is. The principle is that it's possible to take an object and attach another object to it. So whatever that object does, this one does. They, they, they both will do the same thing. So if this object turns, this object goes with it. Like if this is the sun and this is the earth, if the sun goes like that, the earth goes with it. If the orbit around here is like this, when it goes like that, the orbit will be like that. But it's a little bit of a thing, and I don't want to deal with it right now. But you can make what they call children. You can have objects and ch children of objects, and they're locked to it. So whatever happens to mommy or daddy, you have it happens to you too. You go with it. But we'll, we'll talk about that afterwards. Uh, essentially, that's all this program does. It does. It shows you that little thing, and it also shows you how to light the the, the ball. In this case, it's the planet Venus, which I don't believe is that hot. I think it's not that hot, but it's. It's kind of hot, but not that hot. Uh, that pretty much is what I wanted to show you for today. What I'll do is I'll put up the instructions for uh, removing, adding and removing lights so you can add, move whatever you want. Uh, I showed you how to move lights. I'll show you how to move them, how to position them. You put them in the position you want them in. Uh, I'll show you how to change the intensity, change the color, cast shadow, receive a shadow. Okay, And I'll put those instructions up, and you can see how they, how they work. And you might want to play with them a little bit. The, the, I, what I do normally is I, I, I use the wall program, the wall maker. And even if I'm not going to put a wall in it, I'll use it because it gives me all that control, all that cam you know, camera control and everything. And what I'll do is uh, I'll take the objects and I'll add them in myself. In other words, I'll build the walls. And then I will add in a sphere and a this and a that. 
and they'll appear inside the inside the walls. I mean, you just add them in like a regular object, like I did in this program here. Let me bring it up one more time before, before we go. This one here shows you uh, that. This is a this is a program that started off just as Wallmaker. It has all that Wallmaker stuff, and then down the bottom here, Wallmaker made all these things. These are all Wallmaker. It put wherever I put walls, it put the walls and so forth. And then I just simply added these two guys here. I added uh, this basket, which is the basketball, and this cone, which is the uh, cone. So all they are is just they're the same. They're the same kind of things that we used in the previous classes. You just simply make a cone, make a sphere, and then up above, of course, you have to count for them. You have to say, okay, now that I have those two guys, I have to have, you know, a place to tell them how to rotate and where to position. So you add those six things for each one. And that's it. That gives you the ability to put uh, objects into the Wallmaker program and start to do things. It gets to be more fun at this point because you, we we have, uh, we have a couple more things to do, and uh, and then we're, you know, we're by the way you don't even have programs to write for homework. We, we're just down to two automatic ones now and a project. That's all we have left. Uh, we. Uh, we're, we're getting into the, you know, we're riding out towards the end now. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, different ways of creating stuff inside this format so you can make things and do stuff. Uh, among the things we have to do is you have to be able to click on something and have it do something for you. That's a big one, getting control over it. We can have them talk, we can have them play music, we can have it do anything you want. And sometimes when a program starts, if it starts slow because you have a lot of pictures in it, you want to start with a different screen and give, I, I saw it, keep them busy. So basically you have something up there that they have to read and everything like that, then they finally press this button. And by the time they press the button, all that stuff is in and they just fall into the program. Other than seeing a blue space, a black thing, and a white thing, and a bad thing, that's, that's not very professional, okay? So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll be carrying on with this uh, after the lighting. I, I'll, uh, uh, there's no homework this week. But next week, what I'll do is uh, I'll make an assignment so that you can you can answer whether whether what makes the light brighter and dimmer, what makes the light red, what you know. So you can just all you have to do is have the instructions next to you, just to get used to seeing them in operation. You know, used to looking for them. I think looking stuff up is one of the hardest things. If you know what you, you need something to work for you, you have to look up, find out where it is, and you just grab the thing and drop it in. But it's just a matter of you know where is everything. So I'll make a little list of the uh, lighting controls and all that, so you'll have that. Uh, that's pretty much it. I'll be here for a while if you guys want anything else. Okay. I might go to that meeting today. I'm not sure. I have a I have a Halloween costume with a beard, stuff like that. I was thinking of putting it on so nobody would know me. That way I wouldn't have to go through all that oh, oh, stuff. <laughs> yeah. But I'll talk to your father if I go. <coughs> okay.